Good morning, church. Good morning from Mount Tam United Methodist Church in Mill Valley. On a day we hope brings us rain, the renewal of the season. Feels like the new year continues to unfold with hope and grace, and I'm grateful to God that we can be here together in worship. And as always, I'm grateful for the team that makes this possible. Our production team of Jeff and Liz Rose, our superb music director, Hung Jung Choi, and today our music leaders are Joshua Choi and Kristen Choi. And our Staff Parish Relations Committee Chair Anne Mary Bellick has joined us as the reader and to do a lay testimony today. I'm Kim Smith, the pastor here, and I'm grateful to God that we can be together to worship together. And we have this beautiful altar today. Thank you to Sue Ernst for this altar. And we light this candle in remembrance and hope for our new president has reminded us it is in remembrance that we find healing. And so this is in remembrance of the over 400,000 Americans and 2 million people who have passed away from COVID-19 in this pandemic. And we pray for their families and for those who are infected, those who treat them and those who care for them around them. Let us give thanks to God for their lives and pray for those who continue to live. And let us continue in worship with the singing of one of my favorite hymns. You might want to stand when you're at home as Kristen and Joshua and Hong Jung lead us in, gather us in. have to have a mask on anymore. There, now I can see it, not through steamy glasses. Now let us pray. Wondrous God, our hearts are full of praise for all the glorious things you have given us. When we engage your creation, we know it reflects your glory. When we experience the gift of love of friends and family, we are reminded of your tender love for us. When we worship with our sisters and brothers of this congregation and of all faiths, we know we are blessed to be your children. Hear our prayer of thanksgiving this day and sustain in us grateful hearts that we might always praise you. In the name and spirit of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Oh 
A reading from Matthew 22, 34 through 40. When the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked a question to him, to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Thank you, Anne Mary. It's nice to have a lay reader again. I think this is something we'll bring back. Um, Some of you will know the name of Houston Smith, one of the 20th century's great religious thinkers, a historian of world religion, a a profound guru of spiritual culture in the United States and around the world, and a member of Trinity United Methodist Church in Berkeley, where I was privileged to serve as pastor for 18 years. Houston Smith was one of the reasons I came into the ministry. Reading his book, The Religions of Man, Then, Now the World's Religions, opened my mind to the possibility that religion had a place in my life. So when I learned the very first Sunday that as I was walking down the aisle, the very first Sunday that that was Houston Smith, my knees buckled. (laughs) I almost didn't make it down to the pulpit. We became good friends, good spiritual partners, good good souls together in those 18 years. I was such a privilege to know his mind, but also to know his heart and spirit. But Houston and I had some disagreements as well. One of them was on theology. He said he loved his church, its social justice stance, the way it serves the community, the love that is shared, the innovation, but he saw, he called Methodists theologically washed up. <laughs> One day I was at his house for lunch, which I went every six, eight weeks or so, and he always had a copy of my sermons, which were available, which he would critique in loving ways, but critique nonetheless. After a few years, I came in for lunch to his home, and there were no sermons on the table, and I didn't think to ask what was going on. And after a certain amount of our lunch, he just sat back and he looked at me and he said, Pastor, I have to tell you that you talk about love too much. (laughs) You preached about love the last three weeks. You need to be expanding what you're preaching on. That really stung. That one hurt because it was a generalization. So I left. I didn't express my hurt to him then, but it you know, kind of, kind of stayed with me and gnawed at me. And so a few weeks later, I asked to have lunch with him. And I said to him, I understand that theologically our church may not be as diverse and broad and rich as you would like. But I will tell you that I will take the risk of preaching too much about love because I think in a world where people don't know themselves as beloved, when people don't know the love of God, we can't talk about it enough. And his statement back to me was, well, I guess that might be right. When I was in college, I was privileged to meet uh, Harold Beck, a New Testament professor at Boston University School of Theology, and to talk to him about going to that college or to that seminary as for my Master of Divinity. Though I did not go there, I developed somewhat of a correspondence with Dr. Beck for a while. He was a beloved professor. He was so good with students. And at one point, he wrote me a letter. And in the letter, he closed with words that became the benediction I have used in ministry since probably about 1981. May the love of God encircle you. May God's justice love confront and challenge you. Those are my words. And may the merciful love of God comfort you. Today's reading is about the love of God. 
but it's not love as a feeling. And that's what I tried to emphasize with, emphasize with Houston Smith. It's about a way of being. The love of God is not a feeling. It's a relationship. It's a relationship that God has with us and we have with God. So the first is, may the love of God encircle you. This is the love of God. There is nothing you have to do. 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 God's love for us, God's love for you is. It's already there. John Wesley would have called this provenient grace. It's already there. It already encircles you. The benediction says, may the love, may you know that the love of God encircles and surrounds you. That is that kind of love. That's why, for me, you can't preach on it often enough. The love of God is also about justice. Again, it's not a feeling. It's a reality. It's a way of being. Jesus talks about love, God's love as justice, in some very unusual ways. First thing he says of many, many, many is love your enemies. Love who? <laughs> We're supposed to love our neighbors, our, our friends, our family. Love our enemies? With that commandment, Jesus calls us into the kind of love that God has for us. To, to look at that enemy as if they were family or friend. And when my spouse or my children or my friends are hurting, and because I love them, I don't get angry at them. I wonder why they are hurting. And I go into the pain and suffering of their lives and try to help them or be part of the moving out through that pain and suffering. So Jesus asks us to do with our our enemies. It's the preparation for love as justice, to have such deep compassion for the other that we put ourselves in their shoes and we try to understand who and why they are, what motivates them. Jesus was far more interested in what went on to a person's heart than how he looked or what they did. That's the beginning of justice love. But it has a second step. When Jesus is using this teaching in the Gospel of Matthew, it's in what's called uh, the controversy section, where Jesus is in controversy with the Pharisees, the religious leaders of the day, and the Sadducees, the, another form of religious leaders, about what his teachings actually were. Now, the recitation of the two laws, to love your God and, and to love your neighbor, were standard rabbinic teaching, Jewish teaching. But what Jesus is very clear about is that this love is not just an affection for somebody. It's an action we take to love neighbor as self. So as we love ourselves as God loves us, we're asked to love our neighbor. And that's when it becomes justice, because how can we love our neighbor if they hunger, if they thirst, if they're thrown unjustly in prison, if they're uneducated, if the systems of the world disenfranchise them, creating injustice and inequality, how do we love our neighbor? Of course, in the Gospel of Luke, Jesus will answer with perhaps his most favorite and perhaps beloved parable we call the parable of the Good Samaritan, where he really pushes the boundaries of who is my neighbor. And Jesus took it to the outer limit of one of the most disgusting and reviled people on earth for a kosher Jew, which was a Samaritan. He pushes the boundaries out. And that's why God's justice love confronts and challenges us as we walk in our world, as we live in our lives. We know, we know who is both our enemy and our friend, and we know that we are called to love them in ways that helps to create them as neighbors and as siblings in God, sisters and brothers together. The third part of the benediction is this, and may the merciful love of God comfort you. That's the part in which we can live and move and have our being, that God's love is always there. 
oh, God's mercy is always there, which does not mean life will be easy or our suffering will be nil or that we will just, you know, have a Goldilocks-like <laughs> kind of life. But that God is always with us through prayer, through service, through justice, through loving. We know the mercy and presence of God. When I was sent to this church almost now 11 years ago, it was not a move my family and I expected to make. And there were some rough patches along the way in the first few years. But the second I walked into this sanctuary, the second I met with that staff parish committee, when I began to meet the people of this church, I felt the mercy of God because I knew I was called to be pastor here. I knew the call was spot on. So that was the mercy of God to give me this great call, even as the roughness of the transition ensued and it affected our family. But we also found mercy in the love and care and the radical unconditional love of this congregation. The teaching of Jesus today reminds me of that old kid's song. Now, bear with me here because you're going to think this is maybe just a bit sacrilegious, but I want you to hang in there with me. Do you remember this little ditty from when you were a kid? You scream, I scream. We all scream for ice cream. You scream, we all scream for ice cream. Kind of a circular ditty that you would say in the back of the car on a hot day till your parents broke down and took you to the ice cream shop. The ditty for today is love God, love neighbor. Love God, love neighbor. Love God, love neighbor. Love self, love God, love neighbor, love self. It's a beautiful circle of love. That's why I use that benediction to help us remember that in Christian faith, love is not a feeling, though we'll have feelings of love. It's a way of being. It calls us to love our enemy, to really take on the care of another, and then through that service of justice. It's not just affection, it's action. And we can do that because we know we are God's beloved. And what we are called to do is to grow in our awareness of how God's love encircles us always. And that is the love we want to share with everyone we meet. About two years ago, I got an email from our beloved church member, Tom Angelo, who passed away this last year. And most of us who knew Tom knew him with his quick wit and his intelligence and his care for others. Even in his sarcasm, he was just so loving. And he never failed when I talked to him or called on him to ask about my family. Always made such, such a difference to me. And he wrote to me this email, something like this. Dear Kim, I think your favorite word must be beloved. Tom. <laughs> because I call this my beloved church family. Dr. King talked about the beloved community. Tom, I'll take it. I think maybe my favorite word in preaching and writing is beloved. And I'll, I'll say that proudly. And though Houston Smith has gone before us, I would still say to him today, if all I do is preach about love, the love of God, the love that comes in ministry, the love of a congregation, the love of family and friends, loving people will never know that we are serving because we are serving, then I will be a very happy pastor. The love of God encircles us and calls us with thanks to God, let us say, Alleluia. Amen. We come to the time of the offering of our gifts. We listen to beautiful music, our spirits are raised, and we remember again the generosity of God toward us and the call to be generous in response. 
you know what to do. Write that check or go to the church website and hit the donate button. We have a new year, a, a new ministries abounding, and God is gracious and good. So let us receive the offering. Sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Jesus, Jesus, how I love thee. Shout hallelujah. If that didn't get your spirits up, well, anyway, who's to say? And thanks be to God for this beautiful music. Thank you. We come to a time of our prayers. And so please send prayers through the comment section on Facebook. Lift them of your heart, and we'll bring them together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. But in response to each prayer, we will lift our voices. Lord, hear our prayers. So let us pray for Ike's mom, who lives in Germany, who is 100 years old, but took a fall and broke her leg. She's recovering after surgery, but let us pray for her complete healing. Let us pray to God. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for Sandy and Earl recovering from COVID-19. Let us pray to God for their health and their recovery. Lord, hear our prayers. And let us repray for a church member who is entering hospice, who asks that his, her name be withheld, but is beloved of us. And let us pray for their health and their peace and for their family. Let us pray to God. Lord, hear their prayers. Norma asks for prayers of comfort for her brother-in-law. His wife passed away this week. Let us pray to God. Lord, hear our prayers. Let us pray for those suffering with depression and anxiety. May they know they are loved and experience the comfort and healing of God. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayers. Kim lifts up prayers for her mother and stepfather who are both in the hospital with COVID and other ailments. For their health and recovery and peace, let us pray and let us pray for Kim and her family in this time. Lord, Hear our prayers. Let us pray for Robert, who is battling cancer. 
Lord, hear our prayers. Elizabeth raises prayers of gratitude for everyone in this church who supported her parents, Sandy and Earl's recovery from COVID. They are doing better. Let us give thanks to God. Lord, hear our prayers. Emily lifts up prayers that the city of Mill Valley will find ways to permit safe COVID testing. Let us pray to God. Lord, hear our prayers. Lynn raises prayers for the American people that we overcome COVID-19 fatigue and continue to wear masks, social distance, and keep up our spirits. Let us pray to God. Lord, hear our prayers. Jan Les's prayers of blessing on our new administration. Let us pray for justice, for peace, and for good governance. Let us pray to God. Lord, hear our prayers. Let us pray for rain. <laughs> Lord, hear our prayers. I'm looking for these other prayers with thanksgiving for the Choi family. Let us pray to God. Lord, hear our prayers. Let us pray for all of those who are infected with COVID-19 that they may find recovery and healing. Lord, hear our prayers. And let us pray for all those affected by and impacted by COVID-19 that we may continue to recover from the national illness of pandemic fatigue. May we continue to practice those good practices and keep our spirits up knowing that hope is on the horizon. Let us pray to God. Lord, hear our prayers. Mary raises prayers of praise and gratitude for God's continued presence with Peter's battle against cancer. Let us pray for Mary and for Peter. Lord, hear our prayers. And let us pray for all those who uh, work right now to keep our lives possible, beginning with essential workers and stores and all other places, and with particular lifting up of first responders and medical providers, caregivers, doctors, nurses, technicians, all those who are part of that pandemic care. Let us raise them up that they might find their spirits renewed, bless their families, and we give thanks for them. Let us pray to God. Lord, hear our prayers. We're coming to a time of the end of the prayers as I see them and know them. If you have other prayers, continue to place them here. The prayer team and I look every day so that we may continue to be in prayer with and for one another. Let us pray. For all these prayers that you have brought to our voices, O oh God, we give you thanks that we may know how and where to pray. You are with us always, and so sometimes the words of others prompt into our prayers greater knowledge of your spirit. There are also the prayers that live in our hearts that we bring before you and trust in your loving care. And we do this because we may pray in the name of Jesus, our comforter, our savior, our friend, the one who gathers us together as one as we pray the prayer he taught us saying, our father and mother who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now we come to the time of the passing of the peace. So let us share that peace with those who are with us or with ourselves. If you worship in, by yourself at home, in the comment section, in a text to somebody, and continue to share that peace through the week. But the peace of Christ be with you and also with you. And now it's time for our lay testimony and prayer from SPRC Chair Anne Mary Bellick.
As Pastor Kim said, I'm the chair of our uh, staff parish relations committee at Mount Tam Church, um, and I have important news to share with the congregation. Some of you may have uh, seen this news already in um, a mailing that went out this week. Um, our beloved Pastor Kim has let me know of her plans to retire this year as of July 1st, 2021. Pastor Kim is turning 65 this August, and she's serving in her 42nd year of ministry. She's been with our church for 11 years, which may be the longest any pastor has served at this church. Pastor Kim has been an absolute joy to have as our pastor these past 11 years, and we love her dearly. She has been an incredible leader, counselor, spiritual guide, and friend, and she will be deeply missed. I feel honored to have had the opportunity to know her and work with her. Our church has prospered under her leadership, and her legacy will be carried on with our next pastor. Over the coming weeks and months, I and the other members of the Staff Parish Relations Committee will be working with District Superintendent Stacy Current and Bishop Minerva Carcano to keep them well informed of the needs of our church and congregation. In this way, we will help guide their decision for the appointment of our next pastor. This is an important transition for our church. It can be hard to imagine what it will be like to have a new pastor, especially for those of us who have joined the church under Pastor Kim. I know that our next pastor will be thoughtfully and prayerfully chosen, and our church and our congregation will continue to thrive. Please join me in wishing Pastor Kim the very best as she embarks on this next chapter in her life. Next, we'll do a prayer for dedicating ourselves and our congregation. Gracious God, change is never easy and is often bittersweet. In order to change, we are forced to leave behind what has been to embrace what will be. Our congregation has learned that our pastor will be retiring, so change is our journey in the coming months. We are so grateful that you are with us and we move forward. Help us affirm the good things of our past as we learn into a, as we lean into a future where there will be good things, new opportunities, and your amazing grace. As we consider all that is to come, remind us that all goodness comes from you and that by your grace, we are able to do all things in your name. Bless our pastor of this day and our pastor who is to come. Today, we commit ourselves to the necessary work ahead and give thanks for one another. To you, we dedicate our future so that we may continue to be your servant people as Mount Tam Church. We pray in the name and spirit of Jesus. Amen. Well 
the benediction and the blessing, I invite you to stand as you are able. Let us go forth in the love of God, and may that love encircle you. These continue to be the times that God's justice love will confront and challenge you and call you into action of ministry. And always allow the merciful love of God to comfort you so that we may share that love with each person that we meet. In the name of the Creator and the Christ and the Holy Spirit, let us go forth in peace. Amen. <laughs>